Yep, you got a duck. Why put my down? Why ha ha? I have to put his hat on. Why? Y'all? Because it's part of my uniform. I don't. You don't have one? Nope. Nope. Okay, well, I'm gonna walk outside. I'll be right back. Don't, don't leave. Don't Go leave. find your mommy. Go to your don't mommy. Don't leave. I won't leave, I promise. I'm just gonna go outside, okay? Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Don't wipe out, okay? Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. I didn't realize uh, I had the camera on until my grandson started talking to me, but uh, this day's long been awaited. Um, can't say I've waited on this day, but I can say that I've looked forward to this day. I don't think anybody in the military actually looks forward to putting on their dress uniform and parading around themselves and giving like a five minute speech. I don't think too many people do that. I don't know. I know I prefer not to do that. And I know a lot of people I know don't prefer to do that. But. Yeah. So today I'll be retiring. Well, it's my retirement ceremony. My actual retirement date is until December 31st. But. uh, Yeah. My daughter Hope. Um, made it down late last night. I think she got here around nine o'clock with my grandson Leon, so I'm, I'm pretty blessed to have them here right now. I'm extremely excited to have them here right now. It means a lot to me that they made the journey just for a 10, 15 minute ceremony. Uh, my stepdaughter Brandy and her boyfriend Justin are here. Uh, my daughter Madison, of course my wife Michelle, they're all here right now. Uh, not for sure exactly who's gonna attend the ceremony today, but we will see. We will see. <coughs> uh, I've been doing this crap. I can't say crap. I've been doing this army life for 24 years of active duty and some change. I think it's 24 years, three months, and some days when I retire. So I haven't hit 24 months yet, 24 years yet. Uh, I think I hit it in October and then November, December is another two months. Yeah, something like that. I'm not getting too caught up on dates here but it is what it is so yeah I just wanted to talk to everybody about the little what I'm feeling today uh, well, there's hope <laughs> there's hope and Leon I'm just doing a little little self-reflection here don't, don't, please don't, my hair is not even uh, you'll be all right uh, Papa. Yes. I want the radio. This is what I live for now. I want to the radio. You gonna come with me? Yep. Are you hold me? I can't hold you. I got dressed up. You're a big boy. You can walk. Uh, Are you stepping on rocks uh, and acorns and walnuts and stuff? Uh, yeah. Watch out. Those are gonna hurt your feet. They're gonna be owies. Yeah, that hurts. What is it? That is a... Uh, what is it? Some kind of hazel... I don't know what kind of nut actually it is. I've then forgot. I thought it was a walnut, but it's not a walnut. Maybe somebody out there in the in the YouTube world will be able to explain it. If they see They're this mine. video. They're okay, mine. you can have it. You take it with you. Okay, okay oh, go back oh. Go back in the house. Oh, I have You have another one. You're getting yeah. a collection going. You're going to be the nut boy. Okay, go to find mommy. Oh, I have another one. No, <laughs> oh, you're, all, you're all about the nuts right now. <laughs> okay, go find mommy. So anyways, uh, that's my grandson, Leon, in case you can't figure that out. But honestly, guys, I don't feel anything. I'm wanting to get this ceremony over with. I want to go there and just be done. I'm wanting it to be over with. Uh, I did prepare a speech. I'm hoping I can record that and post it up on this channel also. So this video is going to be a lot longer than I wanted, than I want them to be. You know, I try to limit my videos under 15 minutes because I know I don't have the attention span sometimes to sit there and watch people babble on forever. But shit, this is 
a, a chapter in my life that has thousands of pages in it. 24 years I've spent on active duty. 24 years I've done a lot of things. I've spent um, approximately two and a half to three years of my life deployed in combat zones. Some of these guys out there have spent six, seven years. You know, I got lucky and uh, I was in an organization where I'd only go down range, as we called it, down on deployment for, for maybe a month at the most and come back. Then like two or three months later, I'd do it again. So that did get old after a while, but it wasn't bad. You know, it's better than spending a complete year there and then turning around, coming home, spending about six, seven months with your family, then you prepare to go again. That was never a good thing. Oh, you got your boots on now. Yeah, let's let everybody see your boots. Yeah. Can you say hi to everybody? Can you say hi? No, that poop. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I was pretty fortunate in that. But 24 years is a huge chapter to close the door on. Let me, Papa. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really know how I'm feeling about all this. I'll talk to you guys later. He is accompanied by Command Sergeant Major Derek G. Wise, the Brigade Command Sergeant Major. Now approaching is Master Sergeant Kevin L. Doyle. He is being presented with the Meritorious Service Medal for his 29 years of service to our nation. Massarandoro will now receive the national flag as well as retirement pin. He will also receive a certificate of retirement for his dedication to the nation, which is on display with his retirement pin. His wife, Michelle, is being presented with a certificate of appreciation for her dedication to her husband and to the nation, which can be seen along with the retirement certificate. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. Hey, so we might kind of sit around here awkwardly. Hey, I just want to say thank you all uh, for sharing Master and Dole over the last uh, 20 years. I know that it's not an easy, easy life uh, for us, and it's exacerbated the family when we're not sure when your husband's coming to home or when he's going to deploy. And I know that the 20 years of service is a long time to endure that, and just want to say thank you. And although the, uh, the, the medal is a very small token of our, our appreciation, please know that it represents, again, a, a 20 years of service to a very grateful nation. So again, thank you all very much for your sacrifices, for your sacrifices, and for your service. So, Oklahoma, and I was standing there, 
And I remember the drill sergeants come up there, you know, you in your civilian clothes and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, I'm in the army now. I'm looking around, I'm like, there's like a couple hundred of us standing there. We all don't know what's going on. You get this mean old guy that gets off the bus. He just starts yelling, screaming at you for nothing. Get on here, get on here. And then he starts separating us. He was like, um, active army over here. I didn't know what active army meant, so I just walked over there too. He said, national guard over here, army army over here. I said, you're active army guy. In the army. You can't beat that in the army. And I stood here, they, they, they went through the names, you had to go in there, sign in. And my name wasn't on the list. And they said, they was looking at me, they was like, why are you here? I was like, I joined the army. And they, they just kept staring at me. They was like, wait a second. They walked over to the army reserve table, my name wasn't on there. They walked over to the national guard table. And guess what I enjoyed? I enjoyed the Indian Army National Guard. That teach you, before you sign that name on that piece of paper, read the I can still remember that from the spaceship in this day. Can't remember his name, but I can remember his name. Snap, snap, here's the thing. But I learned the hard way. I didn't even know what an MOS was. I didn't know what I signed up for. That was an air defense, had no clue. But that was a lifetime ago. That was truly a lifetime ago, 1992. A lot of people in this room weren't even alive then. It wasn't until 1997 that I came on after duty. I'm not retiring the date in December of this year. I only have served a little over 29 years. 29 years in the military. Some of you may think that's a long time, but for me, but for me, it was a it was truly a blink of an eye. However, I can recall certain events like were yesterday. I remember uh, Will and I was talking about this yesterday. Sitting in Kuwait, and uh, I think I was at New Jersey. They had a bunch of camps there that everybody had seen that before we went into Iraq. And this is during the initial invasion. And I remember we was we loaded up this long pond. And uh, I was on the CG's personal staff back then, but he was taken care of. As minions, you know, we just had a thumb drive where we get on. And I remember uh, I got in the back of a Humvee, and we're standing there, we're all kitted up. We got our mop suits on. Everybody's at mop level three. You don't know what that is. It's this big nasty garment that stinks and all that charcoal. And you're wearing everything except for the mask. And here I am in the back of this Humvee, ready to go into combat. And I'm like. What, what did I get myself into? You know, you always see these war movies, you picture these guys, you are running down to combat, you know, uh, we were soldiers, they get off their aircraft, and they run over there, they take up a fighting position, that's what you think in your head. Yeah, that ain't what happened to me, I was in the back of a Humvee, going across the border, and as soon as we get across the border, there was mobs of children, children everywhere. I was like, where are these kids' parents? We had this, the whole convoy, I bet there was a thousand vehicles just came off to a dead stop. Because these kids just overwhelmed us. I'm just sitting there, I'm like, man, we're locked and loaded, we're ready to go to combat. And we had kids here? What, what am I getting myself into? The kids surrounded the Humvees and stuff like that, they had American flags. They were yelling, USA, USA, USA. And that's where they hit you. This is why I'm here. Not just for me, not for where the political venues were, well, I know what they are, but uh, it's for these kids, for the new generation. We're coming here to help them and make a better life for them. But I could ponder on those events all day long. We could sit here and swap stories, but uh, some of those stories are good ones, and a lot of them are bad, so I don't want to put on that avenue. So in my speech I wrote, now I stand before you trying to figure out how to sum up 29 years of my service into a short speech. I don't know how to do it. I'm doing the best I can right now. But one thing I would like to share with everybody is that I'm grateful for having served for as long as I have. Through my journey, I've earned a bachelor's degree in business management, a certification in supply chain management, 
a Lean Six Sigma green and black belt, as well as an overabundance of uh, amount of knowledge and logistics. I'm thankful to the Army for all these accomplishments. I'm thankful to the Army for taking care of my family. Uh, people don't realize that the military is actually good to you. They do take care of you. All you gotta do is serve you. do what you're supposed to do. Then the day it's on you to make sure that you're family subject to success. The military is there to back you up. You just gotta make the most of it. So moving on to my family and friends. So I was a soldier before I was ever a father. I was a soldier before I was a husband. Surprisingly, he's being good, but I'm also a grandfather. I have three of them. The other two couldn't be here, but uh, God wants me on his shoulders about the big step. Because he hasn't sat down since he got to our house last night. But I have two sons in the military also. Justin. I should say Sergeant with Justin. Um, his last name is Timothy Duke. He's in the United States Marine Corps. He's getting ready to jump over the big pond here shortly and go to Germany with his wife, Juanita. They spent uh, a week with me earlier this month. I can take it today because it's military obligations. And then my youngest son, um, Austin, he can't make it because he's going through RASP training right now. He had talked to me on a link on the phone before he joined the military. And I told him uh, he wanted to do he wanted to do ranger stuff, you know. He's like, I want to, I want to be, a, be that guy carrying a rifle and stuff like that. That's awesome. You can be that guy carrying a rifle, but you can also get a good education. He's like, well, well I'll do what you do. And I said, no, you're not going to do what I'm doing. We're going to be on this fly room, this uh, unthankful task for many days. I said, what do you like to do? And he's like, well, I like to I said, come on, communications. So he signed up. He's going to be one of them help desk jobs now, but. He's going through the RAF program. He'll be in the Ranger Regiment, hopefully, as long as everything goes well. He uh, managed to uh, score pretty high at his PT test yesterday. Uh, he said he's beaten a lot of the infantry guys, which I told him to keep going. That's what's the support guys in their corner about this infantry guy's face when we do beat him on the phone. I made it. I made it in the university. 
And not one time did anybody say, hey, what's your MOS? They just thought I was a legend god or Charlie, you know, whatever it was. So I spent that two weeks going through hell, or at least I thought it was hell. And at the end of it, I remember they were doing team assignments. There was only seven of us that made it, seven or eight of us that made it that day. There's probably like 50 of us that went through there. And I remember they were doing team assignments. And they said, Doyle, team four. So I go over there and I meet my team sergeant. Um, uh, Alexander was his name, Sergeant Alexander. And I'm standing there, I'm talking to him and everything. And then my first sergeant, Sergeant Major, come in. And they're like, what the hell is a 92 Yankee? Everybody's kept against quiet. No one yelled at ease, no one done anything like that. And I'm like, And I, I just kind of raised my hand, everybody just looked at me, the crowd's part. Everybody kind of looked at me, and my first sergeant said, uh, are you a 92 Yankee? And I said, Roger, first sergeant. He was like, why are you here? And I said, uh, I pass. You know, you got a sergeant major in front of me. I was only a PFC at the time. I didn't know. I was staring at the sergeant major back in front of the PFC. Sergeant major walked up to me, you know, I was like that little puppy that wet himself. And, he, and they both just looked at me and they was like, well, you made it, get the spider. Okay, I went to the spider. So that's how I made it to the lurch D. True story, right? Uh, immediately after leaving the lurch D, uh, my time was up there. So I tried out, um, the man started major Hill came down, and he was looking for a supply sergeant, you know, the CG's person was that. So he'd come down, he'd done a lot of PT with us back in the lurch days, and uh, he knew me, and he asked me if I'd like to come up there to work, and I did. I immediately went up there, got the easiest job in my military career, being on the CG's personal staff. At least I thought it was. A lot of late nights, a lot of behind the scenes work, and stuff like that. But I, I first started off with General Cody, then went to General Petraeus, and then uh, General Turner. Moving on, I eventually got smarter, and these guys were coming down from this place called Asymmetric Warfare Group. I said, it was just a group. You know, I tried to put my back in to go to other places, and they wouldn't let me do it. I was like, I'll, just, I'll try out for this place. So I went there, I made the AWG. Pretty sad that they're going away. But uh, I love my life there. And uh, when I learned I loved it so much, I was like, you know what? There's other three letter agencies I'm learning about. Uh, I joined one of the bigger, bigger ones, JSOP. I spent a few years of my life there, learned a lot about the life, my life, learned a lot about the military and logistics in general, about how it's this big in the big army, but it's this big in the real world. I left JSOC, came back to Fort Campbell, and as soon as I got to Campbell, I got ordered to go to NATO. And I was like, well, what the heck is this? So I went to NATO for a while, and I did that thing over there in uh, Kabul. Got done with them, came back, 159. That's why I met Command Sergeant Major with uh, uh, Ron. Uh, appreciate your comments, Sergeant Major. Met him. Met him there. We deactivated the place. Turned it over with 101 Cap. Spent a couple years there. And then, guess what? NATO comes knocking at the door again. They said, guess what? I'm about to start to retire, you know? I had less than a year and a half, two years at this point, retired. I was slowly <laughs> working the idea with Michelle, but she was like, no, you need to stay in. Ended up going to NATO, NATO and Naples, Italy. Um, it was okay, nothing big. Left there, came back here to Fort Campbell. I mean, I'm sorry, went to Korea. Spent some time at uh, the Aviation Gate over there. Left Korea, came back here to um, the Basco Brigade. I tried retiring in Korea. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me. They said, no, we gotta go back to, we gotta go back to the 101st. So I came here. Unfortunately, for Sergeant Major Weiss, one of our first conversations saying, Sergeant Major, I'm going to retire. It's not an easy task. Easy task to do to walk into a guy you don't even know and say, hey, I'm retiring. I can still remember the look on his face. <laughs> but anyways, I'm moving on. I know Michelle. Thank you so much, time. <laughs> but throughout these duty assignments, I've had the pleasure of working with some of the people, some of the best people you could ever imagine. A few of them are standing here in front of you today. Kicking rocks over in Iraq, hit, you try to hit a few golf balls, getting one hell of a terrible sunburn. 
really do want to move that one. We're having cold beers over a campfire. I'll remember every one of you. For you surprised being a friend, you're a family. So in closing, I'd like to thank everyone once again for attending today's ceremony. And for listening to this old soldier babble on for a lot longer than he was supposed to. I love you all. God bless. Matt, sorry, no real signing up. Hey, family and friends, and for strangers of those that might have been watching my video, and now you're seeing my face again. So, this is after the ceremony has been over with. The uh, ceremony has been over with a couple hours. Uh, we went to the museum, walked around on base, uh, checked everything out. But earlier in this video, I had uh, been talking to everybody on, YouTube, on the GoPro. I was outside, my uh, grandson Leon was out there with me picking up nuts. And I was trying to express myself about how I feel and my emotions that I'm going through on a day like this. Um, I don't know how to explain it. You know, like I mentioned before, I had 24 years active duty, five years in the National Guard, 29 years of military service. You know, I started this journey in 1992. I did have a break in service for a year or two. This is 2021. This is September 24th, 2021. And this was my retirement ceremony today. I'm glad that's over with. Uh, I talked for a lot longer than I planned on. My memory, um, I get lost in my memory. That's what my wife told me. I got lost in my memory on some of the points I was trying to make and uh, I'm glad she was sitting in the front row to you know keep doing this thing to get me going through it but guys I'm gonna miss it I'm truly excuse me truly going to miss the military I'm not gonna miss certain things about it I'm not gonna miss getting up early going to PT uh, going to the field that always sucked uh, but there was fun times doing all this stuff too, guys. Uh, military took care of my my family, me and my family. Um, they truly did. All you had to do was do what was right each and every day. Just get up, put the uniform on, go do PT. You know, do what you're supposed to do. Do what you was told to do. Uh, listen to your um, supervisors, the NCOs in front of you, or the officers in front of you. And the military will truly take care of your family. You might not like some of the stuff that the military does for you. But at the end of the day, you're still getting a free paycheck. You're still getting 30 days of leave. You're still getting free college money. Uh, I got free certifications. Uh, my family got taken care of medically wise. And yeah, you might have to wait. You might have got a crappy doctor the first couple times. Then eventually you're going to get a good doctor that takes care of you and gives you the right medicine or whatever you need to succeed. Um, but at the end of the day, the military does take care of you. So what I'm getting at here is that, one, I am relieved that the ceremony's over with. Two, I'm gonna miss the military. I truly am. Uh, yeah. But, uh. Appreciate everybody watching. Thank you for your time. Um, if you sat through the ceremony and you watched the ceremony, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, if you want to see more videos of me and my friend Will and uh, my family and everybody else, please like and subscribe. I mean, this this channel is primarily just for friends and family, but it's open to everybody. I did it that way for a reason because there might be something I do that might strike an interest into you, get you off your uh, derriere and go outside and do something and enjoy life. So that being said, peace. Talk to you guys later. Have a good day.